Welcome my good smelling friends, Ify here. What I want to do today is show you my fragrance collection. Now before showing you each individual fragrance, I just want to show you how the bottles are placed on the shelves and to tell you that they are not placed based on preference, they are placed based on brand and based on looks. So bottles that are similar will be placed next to the same type of bottles or the same brand like the John Varvatos here. And there's there are gaps here because the order is constantly changing because i keep bringing fragrances into my collection so this will change this will not remain like this forever so let's begin with the miniatures the miniatures are placed here because they look nice they are cute and nice and let me show you a bit what fragrances do i have in the miniature collection aramis the classic Bijan for men, I think it's pronounced like that. Again, a classic for men, similar to Aramis. Other classics, such as Fracas by Robert Piquet. Gucci pour Homme 1, a discontinued and now expensive fragrance. Comme des Garçons to men. Lots of fragrances for the ladies. Moschino Forever. Dracar Essence and let's move on to the big bottles okay guys so let's begin i will start with the first row which is made out of perfumes vintage fragrances i have a couple of them the first one is my favorite pineapple vintage iteration which is the intense one still my favorite inspiration of creed aventus from this house it smells more pineapple and more intense the next one is Euphony Intense, this is their inspiration of Creed Erolfa and this smells much better than what it used to smell when they have first sent me and this happens with fragrances that are newly created, freshly created they need to sit down a bit to get more rounded, get better performance I think the term is macerating the next one is Emperor Cologne Intense this is their version of Creed Aventus Cologne. The same thing happened with this one. Now it's more rounded and it has better performance. The next one is one that I look forward to wearing this summer. It's Maverick. And this is their inspiration of YSL M7 Fresh, a discontinued fragrance and now very expensive. The next one is my favorite from this house. It's Evolution de l'Homme Soir. This is their version of Roja's Elysium. I even haven't smelled the original and this one smells so good. I didn't compare it to the original, but I really like their version. And the last one is their Beast Mode Creed Aventus. This is Intense the One. This is so strong more musky still very fruity smells like pineapple the next row starts with a classic from yatagan from caron named yatagan this is a masculine powerhouse mossy animalic strong fragrance the next one a fragrance which used to be very popular Givenchy pie vanilla almond a bit herbalicious smells still smells good in my opinion still has good performance in my opinion the next one atkinson's pirates grand reserve this is my favorite from the house boozy gourmand fragrance the next one david of hot water not as good as the cool water version smells a bit cheaper but i have it in my collection the next one is Insomnia by Faviol Seferi. This is a clone of Black Phantom by Killian. The next one is probably one of the best Aramis fragrances, Tobacco Reserve, sadly discontinued. Smells so good and modern. The next one is Bentley for Man Intense, which unfortunately for me, it doesn't work as well as it does for others. It smells cheap and sophisticated. Uh, no, it doesn't smell cheap. It is cheap, 
and it smells so sophisticated and expensive but it has something that for me it doesn't work it's too much when i wear this i think it's too strong and it has something about it which for me it makes me wanna get it off the next one is cedre by lt beaver this is a cedar based fragrance obviously smells like a more rugged more rougher version of Linstant by Guerlain. Next row starts with Pulp by Byredo. This is like a sour fruit salad made out of unmatured fruits, fr fruits that are still green, that are still sour, that didn't get to maturity. Next, another one from Aramis, Havana, another tobacco based fragrance. I really like this one too, but not as modern as Tobacco Reserve. The next one is the iconic fragrance from Versace, Versace The Dreamer. This is a fragrance which you either love or hate. It doesn't smell as mass appealing as, let's say, uh, Eros. The next one is Cedra Boise. The fragrance which made the brand popular, in my opinion, it smells like a alternative to Creed Aventus, and it is an alternative, but it's not a clone. It has something on its own. It's sweeter. It's it has more cedar. The next one, it's something that I really love from the House of Fragonard. Check out the sun on the bottom. This smells like a more modern version of. Tom Ford's Neroli Portofino. It's sweeter, very easy to wear by anyone. The next row, Downhill Century. This is a great bag, bang for the buck because you get lots of juice. You get uh, an almost niche-like smell, but made by a designer house. Good performance. Lalik Puron. This is a classic from Lalique. It smells similar to Creed Bois de Portugal. Not as classic or vintage as Yatagan, but still not as modern as the rest of the fragrances these days. Speaking of Creed fragrances, Creed Royal Water, my favorite from the house so far. It smells royal. And another royal fragrance from the house of Creed, Royal Oud. This smells probably the most expensive smelling Creed fragrance. Not so much Oud, but very sophisticated. Moving on to the next side, there's an incomplete row of Gian Varvaro's fragrances here. I still need to add Gian Varvaro's Artisan here, but I do have Vintage, which is so unique. This is actually the fragrance that got me started with the Gian Varvaro's brand. It smelled so different from the rest of the designer. Tobacco, leather, a bit more mature, but definitely not a vintage. The next one, the original Gian Varvaro, smells more modern because it's sweeter, still leather-based, but more youthful. And the next one is probably the rarest, one of the rarest. Gian Varvaro's fragrances these days, Dark Rebel. This is um, one of the best, actually one of the best Gian Varvaro's fragrances. The next row we have lots of 24 fragrances. 24 Go Dark. This is uh, like an alternative to Dolce & Gabbana The One Gentleman. Better performing, much cheaper, still available because the Dolce & Gabbana one is discontinued now. The next one is 24, the original, I would say. This is a bit unisex, but still, it has something a bit animalic to it. It has a, an oud note in the background. I, I think I prefer this one so far from what I have. The next one is the infamous 24 gold. This, I have to admit, smells good very um, oriental very middle eastern like 
but I think it doesn't have the same performance it used to have when it was released. And the next one is Platinum, which is not as good as the gold one, but it's still in the same type, it's still oriental, it's a bit more feminine, more floral. And the last one on this row is my favorite Gian Varvaro's fragrance, it's Platinum. I really love this one, I keep talking about it for a good reason. And the next row is made out of blue and purple bottles, that doesn't mean that all of them are fresh blue themed fragrances. This one is fresh, it's Versace Eau Fresh. This is the mass appealing summer fragrance. The next one is Bulgari Purom PLV. This is a soapy, inky fragrance, very unique, very unique designer fragrance. Now I think it's discontinued. The next one, Nautica Voyage. This is an iconic cheap fragrance, fresh, long-lasting, apple-based smell. The next one is the purple, lovely juice from Rassasi, Rassasi Darvage. This is a very linear, yet very classy, very gentleman-like scent. Not at all a Middle Eastern smell, it smells very Western. One of the best Rassasi fragrances, actually. And the last one on this row is Givenchy Incense Ultramarine. This is not the usual summer fragrance. This smells like sun lotion. And we have two rows left. Another blue fragrance. This is actually from the Blue Mediterraneo line from Aqua di Parma. It's called Mandorlo di Sicilia. This is not a very fresh fragrance because it's based on almond and it's very powdery, it's sweet. It has something that makes it very fresh, especially in the opening. But overall, this is a slightly powdery, sweet, creamy, almondy fragrance. It's actually more feminine than masculine. Next one. It's another blue aquatic fragrance from the Spanish house, which I really love, Loeve. This is uh, more complex, more well blended and slightly better performing, believe it or not, than Nautica Voyage. I like this one as well, very much. The next one is a cheap fragrance that doesn't get enough attention, in my opinion. It's Carrera Puron. This smells also fresh, fruity, slightly green, not really aquatic, but definitely a summer scent, a spring summer scent. The next one we have is Nuclear Cologne. I don't need to say anything about this fragrance, it's very popular, one of the best cologne, one of the best Mugler fragrances. The next one is Love and Luck by Ed Hardy. Actually, it's by Christiana Audigier and Ed Hardy. This was considered a clone of Creed Melesim Imperial a few years ago. It's still reminiscent of that fragrance, but it has something on its own. It's more vintage. And the last row, we have a couple of Le Mans, Le Mans the original, we have Ultramal, more modern version of the original, we have the favorite, my favorite, Zaro fragrance, which is a Zaro Visit, it starts very niche-like in the opening, it has a very high quality in the opening, but then it settles down to a cedar base to a designer-like cedar base. And the last one from this row, there's Lanvan Oxygen, which is a very azonic, herbal-like. It's something that you wear more for yourself rather than the people around you. But still, it has a commercial aspect to it. 
meaning that it's in the same genre as Aqua, Aqua di Gio. So it is a bit mass appealing. So this was it. This was the top shelf. Until the next video, when I'm going to show you the second shelf, all you have to do is just keep smelling great.